This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to Covered in Pet Hair, a boozy show for pet lovers on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Isabel Alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a young entrepreneur who is here representing an amazing brand. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a recent college grad, an entrepreneur, an adventure seeker, road tripper, and a foodie. She's a fitness fanatic, an adrenaline junkie. She was born in Washington, D.C. and currently lives in Chicago. She's a second parent, she says, to a calico cat named Star. She's host of the Mela Moment Pet Health Podcast and Mela's chief of staff, Daniela. Morgan Pascual Vaca. Welcome, Daniela. It's so good to have you on the show. Well, thank you for that introduction. And it's so good to be here. I have actually, I don't think I've ever had anybody introduce me with so many words and so many descriptors. So this is awesome. I'm sure I didn't even get to half of the things that you bring to the table. And I want to get to know your whole trajectory with Mela and your podcast and everything that you do. But before I do that, I want to introduce our drinking game today. For anybody participating in our drinking game today, anytime you hear this word, the secret word is technology. Make sure you take a drink of whatever you're enjoying, whether it's alcoholic, non-alcoholic, a coffee, a beer, whatever it is. Just take a drink. Whenever you hear that word, we won't know what it is. So it's just kind of like a little fun play along So that while you're following our conversation. But please be sure whatever you're drinking, if it's alcoholic, do not drink and drive and always drink responsibly. And wherever you're joining us from, just make sure you meet that age minimum for alcoholic beverages. So what are you having today, Daniela? Yeah, so I'm having something that I kind of came up with because I went into my fridge today and it looks great because I uh, took some raspberries that were going bad and I just smushed them a little bit. Yes. And I also had a, it's, it's I call it my uh, spring cleaning fridge time uh, because it's, you know, spring cleaning era. Yes, and yes. so I had my raspberries going bad and I said, I have to do something with those. And then I had a little bit of that, the Costco Kirkland, like pre-made margarita mix. It's fantastic. It's usually golden. Now it's not golden because I put it in with my raspberries, <laughs> but I mixed it in. I also put my favorite tequila at the moment, uh, favorite only because I like my cheap stuff. And it's also from Kirkland. So all of the Costco stuff right in here, mix it all together. And yeah, it's not bad. Love it. Spring cleaning fridge drink. I'm having a little bit of liquor 43 today, a very traditional Spanish liquor. I Cheers. love it. I love, I love that glass. It's beautiful. Right now. Cheers. It's <laughs> so pretty, isn't it? And I love that you love Costco stuff. I am obsessed with Costco. So cheers to you and all that we have in common. <laughs> cheers. I am so excited to get to know you, you know, a little more socially. And I was so impressed that you were from Washington, D.C., born and raised, which is not something that happens a lot. A lot of people are born in Virginia, Maryland, but not everybody is from Washington, D.C. So are you from Washington, D.C. proper? I'm proud to say that I am. 
For anybody who knows Washington, D.C., I am from the DuPont Circle neighborhood, born and raised right there in the center. So I am glad that you asked that because there are a lot of people who kind of get away with saying they're from Washington, D.C., but they're really from across the border, Maryland or Virginia. Oh, but yeah, I was right there very close to downtown D.C. And Amazing. that was my home for many, many years. <laughs> So is your family in any way related to like the embassy or any kind of world banks and things? Is that how you ended up in D.C. or your mom ended up in D.C.? No, actually, we have no government connection, no diplomacy. It Both of my parents just kind of ended up there. They both have yeah, non-governmental jobs and just kind of love the city. There's a big Spanish international community there for yes. whatever reason. I guess it is just yeah, a very international city. Yes. And they stayed. They're still there. <laughs> Yes, I worked at Haleo for very many years. I worked for Jose Andres and I worked in Bethesda and Washington, D.C. proper um, on 7th Street. I lived in the D.C. area for 15 years. I went to Maryland, so I started in College Park. Then I moved to Alexandria for work. Then I moved into Capitol Hill for a while with my then boyfriend. Then we moved back to Northern Virginia. Then I moved out and I moved into an apartment in Alexandria again. And now I'm in El Paso, Texas. I honestly, okay, after this podcast is over, I need to ask my parents. I'm pretty sure you guys probably know each other. We're really good friends with Jose Andres' family. Oh my gosh. So there's got to be some connection. I bet you guys have seen each other in passing at some party. So that's fantastic. I am sure I have, I've waited on your parents at Haleo because I worked there for many, many years. So if they love that place, that's probably where they would know me from. It's such a small world that we met in Vegas at Super Zoo and we have like this DC connection. But I want to invite you to play a game because I know DC. I love DC, but I don't know much about Chicago. So I want to invite you to play a game with me. Indulge me in this game. And it's called Who Does It Better, DC or Chicago? Are you ready to play? Of course. (laughs) All right. I only have seven categories, but these are kind of high on my list of important things about cities. So the first one is Who Does It Better for Weather? Okay. This is actually, so if you had split it off, I would have had a dead answer for both. But Chicago does summer like no city. I love Chicago summer. I think DC's summer, the swamp, is just very unbearable. I I don't leave my house in the summer in DC. I stay inside. I'm like, I love the AC. Chicago, during the summer, I spend every day, all day, every day outside. Winter, I bet you've heard about the dreaded winters in Chicago. They are as bad as they sound, or if you've even experienced them for a day, a week, they're bad. So (laughs) DC winters are fantastically mild compared to Chicago. So honestly, a complete 50-50 split. If I had to choose, I would probably go Chicago just because the summers are insanely beautiful. Yes. So I remember living in DC, but going home to Miami. I, I grew up in Miami and like it was cooler in Miami than it was in DC because we had at least like the ocean breeze. DC has nothing. And now I live in El Paso and people are like, it's so hot here. I'm like, at least it's not as humid as DC. But it's the swamp. The people it decided really to is. build the city on top of just marshland and mosquitoes. Exactly. So. And it's like, it's like steamy for those who aren't familiar. Ugh. All right. So <laughs> I know you are not on the market, but you probably have friends that are dating. So what city is better, DC or Chicago for dating? I'm going to take D.C. for that one. D.C. has more just diversity and more international people. Chicago's Midwestern. I'm not going to lie. Everybody here is just like they probably grew up outside of Chicago in the cornfields. Uh, If they've left Illinois, it's because they've gone to Michigan. And so it's it's just, yeah, it's. (laughs) Just not a lot of variety. I think DC is just fantastic because yes, you do get the stereotype of everyone's a staffer, but that's only if you're a transplant to DC. If you're actually from DC, if you know DC people, if you're really ingrained in the DC community, it's just, it's so international. It's so diverse. It's so cultural. There's so many people. You don't have to hang around Capitol Hill to try to find those like White House boys. You don't, you don't need them. There's other ones out there. Yes, (laughs) it's so true. (laughs) Well, you know, what's funny is I always ended up dating people who were somehow related related to government and I married my husband who is military and I met him in DC. So I've dated a lot of military in DC, but I will say that I love how diverse DC is. I left Miami as like a 20 year old going to college. I transferred from FIU, which was all like Miami people, Cuban Americans, all that went to Maryland where it was like 35,000 students and they were from all over the world. And I loved that so much. And I'm sure you're familiar with my favorite 
club or like bar that is super international and it's called Cafe Citron. It's right by your neck of the woods. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> that is my old stomping grounds. I spent so much time at Cafe Citron and you would meet people from like the Middle East. You would meet Russians. You would meet the you'd like French. You would meet Latinos. You would meet everybody from all over the world. It was so cool. Now, the most important one, because I'm a big foodie and eater, just like you, dining out, which city does it better? Okay, dining out, I'm gonna have to go Chicago. Ooh, th them fighting words. Yeah, no, I think Chicago has fantastic food options. And what it really is, is just like a variety of different budgets. And I say this because like when I was growing up in DC, as a child, you know, you're like 12, you have your allowance, you don't have money to spend on food places. So you go to the same places over and over and over again. I literally only went to the same two restaurants with my friends. Right Here, you can be on a budget, you can be balling, and there's options that are fantastic. And there's just, just like, I don't know, it's, it's such a sprawling city that there's different neighborhoods for different types of food. And so I think, yeah, Chicago's gonna have to win there. That is so cool. I love that because that's such an important part of it. Not everybody has like the budget for a Michelin star restaurant. So yes, let's, <laughs> let's make it accessible and good. All right, so this one was gonna be wine, but now that you said you like tequila, who does tequila better? Okay, back to DC. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, we're gonna go back to DC for that one because I would say so restaurants, Yes, Chicago wins on restaurants, but DC wins on bars. Mm. So just like the plethora of rooftop bars and outdoor bars and everything from like Barcelona wine bar, I yes. think. I know it's not tequila, but I, one of my I favorite like gastro pubs ever. Yes. DC's got gastro pubs down packed. So yeah, I think tequila's back there. <laughs> Absolutely. I love that answer. Okay, live music. Live music. Now we're going to go back to Chicago. Ooh. And this is also because so Chicago hosts the you know, infamous Lollapalooza, the Pitchfork Festival, all of the outdoor mm -hmm. festivals, those happen in Chicago. Those don't happen in DC. There's like, they had the landmark for I think five years in the early 2000s and that yeah. was it. So I used to go to the Black Cat a lot. Yeah, they're like individual venues. Yes. But I just feel like from like a festival and concert yes. and like bigger deal with live music, Chicago yes. definitely wins there. I'm not surprised by that answer at all. <laughs> all right, fitness. Who does it better? Fitness is a very interesting one. Um, I, when I lived in DC, I was not into fitness. I was actually <laughs> a big couch potato. I did not start doing anything until I came to Chicago. But as a, an absolute rowing lover so i i did row all throughout college i'm currently taking a break but i will definitely go back to that uh dc has some of the most fantastic rowing clubs in the u.s so dc definitely takes it that's yes. if i ever move back to dc like i will find a home in one of those rowing clubs for sure yeah i loved running in dc even though it was like the humidity or whatever but like it's just there was such a running like so much running so much biking so much like so many trails just so much outdoorsy stuff you could do. And because the winter's pretty mild, you could still do them pretty much all year. So yeah, yeah I agree with you. Fitness in DC is kind of nice. And that's another thing that helps the dating because everybody looks pretty good to me. That is um, true. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the last and most important one is pet friendliness. Who does it better? Ooh. Now that one's a very good question because I'm trying to run through all of the, all of the places in my head right now and I can't find a single difference because we're really? quite, okay. Dog parks, a fantastic amount in both places. Dog friendly restaurants, just a plethora, both places. Bars, yeah, like everywhere that's dog friendly. I, I think this might be a draw. Ooh, I love I don't that know if that's so allowed. much. That's a total, everything's allowed. <laughs> don't even worry. <laughs> everything's allowed here. <laughs> All right. So I want to know about you and how you joined the Mela team. When did that happen? Of course, yeah. So this happened my second year of college. This was three years ago. And uh, I was, I, I worked at a vet clinic all throughout high school, kind of went into college with this idea that I wanted to go to vet school. Uh, but because I had worked at a vet clinic for four years, once I came to college, I said, okay, I want a new job that's not necessarily being a vet assistant. Again, I want to branch out, try something else, but definitely still in the pet industry because nice. I love pets. And so I, my mom and I sat down one day, we started Googling just 
cool pet tech startups, uh, just companies in the pet world that were making a big difference. And we stumbled upon uh, some article, I don't know if I remember the name of it, no idea. And one of them was Mela and it looked super cool. And I reached out to Mela, threw in my cover letter and lo and behold, what I did not know, we found this completely on Google. I had no idea that Mela already had a relationship with my college. And oh. so completely just like randomly, because Mela is a Chicago-based startup, they had a relationship with the University of Chicago. And so they were already hiring interns just from my school, picking them up. And so almost as soon as I sent that cover letter, I got a phone call from my current boss saying, all right, so what are you going to start? And I was like, ah! questions for me? Interview? Zoom? Nothing. It was like, do you want to start tomorrow? We need you. And oh so I joined the team and I loved it. And we were remote back in the day. This was 2020. So we were already remote before COVID. And so honestly, COVID came, I think COVID hit like a month after I joined the team. And because we were already remote, I was like, all right, cool. We'll just keep yeah. it on our remote stuff. And I've yeah, been with the team ever since joined full time after my graduation last year. So yeah, it's been great. Congratulations. Well, tell me what Mela is. So for those who aren't familiar that might be tuning in. Yeah. So Mela is just a complicated little company because I used to say that Mela Pet Care created the world's first accurate underarm thermometer. And that's totally true for dogs and cats. But now I can't explain it like that anymore because that's when we had one product. And now yeah. we have seven in varying stages of production. And so now I have to stop myself and I have to say, we're not a thermometer company. We're an ecosystem of digitally connected devices. So we just make these non-invasive products that get your pets most important vital signs without harming them. They won't even notice they're getting it. And it's all, they're all these Bluetooth products. They write back into an app. If you're a vet, they write into your practice management system. And so now it's just all about collecting vital signs in a way that doesn't make everybody uncomfortable. And then just sharing that data in a way that just hasn't been done before. That is amazing. It really is. I, I learned about Mela before I went to Super Zoo and I stopped by your booth because I was so impressed with what um, the press release had said. So what is your favorite part about working with Mela? Honestly, I think it's the fact that we have all of these products and all of this innovation that's coming down the line. Uh, when I first joined the team, it was just one product. And while that's cool, it kind of would have hit that dead end, really, where we we say, okay, we've launched the product, we're done, and then we back right. away. What I love about like the team is just, it's constantly, we just come up with new ideas. And we'll say, you know what? There's no way to take your pet's oxygen saturation. Okay, let's make a product for that. And so it's just, it's not slowing down. And that's what's something that I, I love. I think honestly, in this day and age, there's no use in slowing down. If you have an idea, like make it happen. That is true. And you guys are doing stuff that like not many other companies are doing, or at least not at the scale and at the speed that you guys are doing it. I want to take a break right here. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about Mela specifically and those products that Daniela is hinting about. We're going to learn all about that product line, what's in production, what already exists, what's coming down the line. I want to learn all about it. So please don't go anywhere. We will be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Molly, here's your dinner. <laughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a six inch tray for large bowls and a four inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your cat tree tray today. Go right now to cattreetray.com. That's cattreetray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Pet 
Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I'm having a fascinating and fun conversation with Daniela Morgan Pascual Vaca, who is the chief of staff at Mela Pet Care. So I am actually super fascinated by this company. I met Daniela at Super Zoo. We had a little quick chat because she had a lot of people waiting to check in with her and see her products. And I want her to very quickly play a game with me. Daniela, are you open to, in two minutes, telling me about Mela's product line? Of course. Yeah, you can okay. time me. <laughs> All right. I'm going to time you. I call this game the Mela lineup. One, two, three, go. All right, we have our Mela Pro underarm thermometer. It is made for veterinary professionals and it is an underarm thermometer for dogs and cats. Writes back into your patient record. Then our second product is the Mela Home. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's the same as the Mela Pro, but it's made for home use, a lot smaller. That data can then be sent to our partner app and can be sent to your veterinarian in real time. Our third product is the world's first scale that can take your pet's BMI or body composition score if we're talking vet terms, body fat percentage as well as weight. It's designed more for vets so that they can have a less awkward conversation about weight. That comes actually with our complimentary fourth product. It's the Tabby Tape Measure and it, we all we ask is to get a few more for metrics of your pet, a few quick measurements, head circumference and more to get a more accurate body condition scale. Then number six is our Charlie chip reader. It is a chip reader, universal check-in for your pet. And so you don't even have to write in your pet's information at the vet, it's automatic check-in and it'll pull up their record. Number seven, our last one is our Possum Pulse Oximeter. It's a band wraps around the hind leg of your pet. It'll take oxygen saturation, heart rate, and respiratory rate. Wow! <laughs> She did that in one minute and 15 seconds. Wow, it's almost like this is my job to talk about these things. <laughs> almost, almost. So one of the things that I love about Mela and one of the things that called my attention, and if anybody has tuned into multiple episodes that I've done is I am fear-free certified professional. I love the fear-free organization. I have just interviewed Dr. Julie Liu with fear-free happy homes She's a veterinarian that actually I met at the Texas Pet Sitters Conference when she presented about the importance of fear free and pet sitting. So for me, Mela has become synonymous with fear free. Can you talk about what relationship Mela has with the fear free organization? Of course, yeah. So the Mellow products are part of the Fear Free Preferred Product Program. And so back in the day, I actually, so I had Dr. Marty Becker, the founder of Fear Free on my podcast, and we sat down to talk about just the Fear Free movement. And halfway through this episode, we're kind of doing it unrelated. We're just talking about Fear Free, not about Mella. And he just goes, you guys have the perfect product for Fear Free. And at that point, we weren't even certified or we weren't part of the uh -huh. Preferred Product Program. We said, wait a minute. Yeah, he's so right. And so we kind of shut off that episode. We had, you know, a great time just talking to all of the team members. They're mostly a lot of the founders, I guess, are all family, which I think is really funny. Yes. But we said, okay, we got to get these part of the preferred product program. And it's really just because, you know, we had always had the comfort of pets in mind, but we had never really put a label on it. So we always mm -hmm. just called it non-invasive, comfortable, Fear free, but without, you know, the the tagline to it. We just right. say, yeah, you know, pets wouldn't be afraid because, you know, we were trying to take away this uncomfortable nature of taking rectal temperatures that yes. everybody hates. And I hated it when I was a vet assistant back at one of the vet clinics. You know, I I started at 14 years old and last thing I wanted to do was put a rectal thermometer up a dog or cat's butt. I was like, I'm going to get scratched. <laughs> I'm going to get bitten. Yes. So everyone's going to be uncomfortable. Yes. And so... As soon as Dr. Barty Becker was like, this is such a product for Fear Free, we just hopped on that. And yeah, we've been just best friends with Fear Free ever since. <laughs> yeah, you guys, it's like a marriage made in heaven for sure. I I, I like I, I'm shocked that it was such an organic kind of collaboration. Like, I think it's so wonderful. You would have thought that that it would have been much more intentional. I love how it was like destined for you all to collaborate. So what to you, having been a vet tech, having working with Mela and all the products you are, you know, creating, what does fear free mean to you specifically? Honestly, to me, it just, it means that your pet doesn't even notice that they're going into 
the vet or another uncomfortable situation, whether that's, yeah, another pet sitter's home that they're unfamiliar with, outdoors in a park that they're unfamiliar with, Fear Free just really spans every aspect of a pet's life. So I know it, right now it kind of has that connotation of a vet, right? So vet mm-hmm. clinics are certified, a vet professionals are certified, but I do feel like it's just every aspect of that pet's life where situations that they feel uncomfortable in or generally fearful in like the vet clinic where Mm -hmm. honestly they're not even going to notice they as a cat they won't you know cower in the corner they'll come out of their little cage um you know dogs will keep wagging their tails where it's just going to be another aspect of life and so that's one of the things with the thermometer is that you know when you're getting your rectal temperature taken you can feel that of course you can (laughs) and the idea with this is that you can't feel the underarm thermometer it's just like petting the dog (laughs) you know you just slide it right under the armpit leave it there for about 10 to 15 seconds they didn't even know that that was happening and so we just want to get to a place where vet care is seamless it just fits right into the pet's life they walk out of the vet clinic or anywhere that they were feeling completely fine and happy right exactly i'm a big proponent for consent whether it's with my children or with pets and like what are the chances you'd really get consent for a rectal thermometer? Like none, (laughs) zero, like zero. There might be a naughty pet out there that's like, yeah, this is fun. (laughs) But very few of them are going to be like, this sounds like a great idea. So I think that it's so important to come up with creative ways that we can get the information we need without assaulting our pets. Like, Like, really? And that's why I was so drawn to your company. So to you, what is the most valuable thing that a pet parent can take from maybe purchasing one of your products for their home use? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things is just that getting vet care is more affordable and accessible than you might think. I know so many, especially straight out of college, I know a lot of pet parents who don't visit the vet regularly, whether that's due to, you know, they don't want to put their cat on the metro or they, it's just, they can't afford an exam visit. And so it gets you know, push back. And so maybe they take their pet to the vet once every five years. Maybe yeah. it's just only when they're feeling ill. And so the reason why we made this home line of, of vital signs devices is to say, you can now take care of your pet's health at home. And that's so much easier because then maybe you can hop on a telehealth appointment. Maybe you don't have to drive to, to find a new vet in the suburbs, or you know, maybe you don't have to I try to figure out all of these other ways to take care of your pet. You can get their vital signs. You can figure out what's going on. And it just empowers them to be better pet parents at home without feeling the need to spend that extra money or find somewhere that's more accessible. So that's really what we're trying to do with our home line of products. I love that you mentioned that there are sometimes not accessible veterinary offices for some people. I think they call them veterinary deserts where like they don't have veterinarians nearby. And so taking the vet, the pet to the vet is a long process. It's time off work. It's going to another city. It's driving a long ways. It's especially for a cat who's not used to its carrier. It's so stressful. It is not like a fun road trip that anybody wants to take, especially if it ends with a rectal thermometer being thrust up them. So like I get, I totally understand that this is fear free and really like a matter of consent, but it's also a a matter of accessibility, which I think is so important because the investment might be initially a big one, but it can also be like a, a lifeline for a person that can't, whether they are maybe uh, in the part of the disability community or just in a place where they don't have veterinarians nearby, they can now have these vital signs, tell them to the vet and the vet can prescribe medication or, you know, at that point, recommend an emergency veterinary clinic if it's necessary. And we're not taking our pets to the vet just because they had a little bit of diarrhea, which I think a lot of new pet parents can do. No, you're so right. And it is true that, yeah, initially you do have to you know pay for a thermometer. But the idea is that over time, this thermometer will help you know when to take your pet to the vet or not. You know, if they are having diarrhea, should you wait a few days? Or if they have a fever, you should probably take them in immediately. So then it does, yeah, save you this time and energy and trying to find a vet, trying to go to the vet and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And the cost of just showing up for them to be like, monitor them. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Nobody wants that. 
Yeah, you get charged walking through the door. That does happen. <laughs> exactly, exactly right. So tell me about the scale. And I love that because pet obesity is becoming like a true epidemic. I love that that's where you're headed. I mean, I don't know if you've ever had an obese pet, but if you go to the vet, it's very subjective. You know, their their way of finding out a body condition score is, you know, one to five or the one to nine scale. And usually they have a chart up on the wall and it's like, where does your pet rank on that? And so there's all these subjective things. It's like, okay, well, I can kind of feel their ribs, but they kind of have a little bit of fat up here. Like, what number is that and then of course they're like weight is a hard conversation to have and especially if you don't have this data backing it because it's so subjective because it's so qualitative a lot of times vets will under report that number and so whereas they mean to say yes your pet is obese let's work on some like meal plans some fitness plans they won't say that because they don't want to be offensive because it's so subjective but the idea with the scale you put the pet on the scale, you get a number and that's data right there. And so it's hard to fight data and it should just make it so much easier for a vet to say, hey, the algorithm says this. So. Yes. Yeah, like it's at this number, let's shoot for this number instead. And you're not really offending anybody. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, I think that I think we mean we do that for humans. I was just at the doctor and I stood on something that gave me my body mass. What is it? Body mass, a BMI, body mass index. And it is an important number because even though it's not flawless, it's a good guide. So I think yeah. that it's important that pet parents have that information as well. Um, and then there was something on your website about a pet bowl scale. Tell me about that. Yeah, so our Mabel scale, it's a little further down the pipeline, uh, but this is going to be fantastic. It's using the exact same data and technology behind our scale, like our the BMI scale, but it's a lot smaller, um, a lot easier to track fluctuations. And yeah, it's made so that it goes under your pet's favorite food bowl. It'll track fluctuations in food eaten and food given from your pet. And it will track just caloric intake, food intake. Uh, It does pair to our app, like all of our products pair via Bluetooth to our app. And so within the app, you'll say, you know, I'm having the Purina diet or the Hills diet. And the app knows the nutritional intake of that food. And so then once it changes um, or attracts, you know, the changes and fluctuations in the food eaten, the food given, it will just track that over time. And so it's a really good way to not only know how much your pet is eating, how much they should be eating, whether you didn't communicate with your partner about feeding them (laughs) in the morning, uh, just all of that. It's just like a a little extra tool that also, yeah, will help pair with the, the BMI scale. And it gives you, yeah, that full nutritional intake. That's amazing. I love that because again, the pet obesity epidemic, a lot of us are overfeeding our pets. And when somebody tells you just watch their weight, like that's such a, that's such a like general thing to say, like watch his weight. So like what, once he's too fat and I notice, then I have to scale it back. Like I prefer me, my preference is always to be preventative and to prevent these issues because even if he spends a little too long overweight i think it affects his body and his uh, long longevity and his overall quality of life so i love that you guys are giving pet parents the power at home to be proactive to be preventative to be informed and aware and make decisions based on data rather than like oh he kind of looks a little chunky you know no yeah that's totally the idea tell our audience how we can learn more about mela pet care yeah, of course. The easiest way is just our website, M-E-L-L-A dot A-I. And it used to be a very thermometer centric website. We said, that's no good. We have so many other products. And so now it's more about the entire ecosystem. And that's where you can go to learn. Well, I just want to propose a toast to you for being my guest and for sharing all this awesome information, doing all the work that you do with Melipec Care. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Truly. I've had so much fun chatting with you. I also want to propose a toast to my executive producer, Mark Winter. Thank you, Mark. And to our audience for tuning in to our conversations. I so enjoy bringing these awesome guests to you and bringing a little bit of my love of the pet industry to you on Pet Life Radio, YouTube, and all the podcasting platforms. Please remember to like, subscribe on YouTube, and review our podcast on all of the podcasting platforms because it helps me diffuse this information super valuable information to more pet parents just like you so here's to a life covered in pet hair 
because there's no better way to live. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> to learn more about Covered in Pet Hair, please visit CoveredInPetHair.com or PetLifeRadio.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.